Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. Uh, today I want to show you how I finish a uh, freshly turned bowl with tongue oil. Uh, it's one of my favorite finishes. It's nice and durable, uh, helps protect the wood, and helps bring out a lot of color, as well as you can get, actually get a pretty nice shine off of it as well. And we're going to be working with this freshly turned maple burl bowl. Um, I've already put a kind of a primer coat on here of tongue oil, but the steps still apply, everything's gonna be the same. So I'm gonna walk you through how I finish this freshly turned bowl with uh, Lee Valley 100% pure tongue oil. Uh, the reason I use 100% pure tongue oil is there's a possibility that this might be used as like a salad bowl or something like that. And the polymerized tongue oil uh, can have some uh, heavy metals and uh, additives in it, like uh, drying chemicals, which uh, can be pretty toxic. So. We don't really want to put that on something we're going to put salad or any kind of food directly into. So uh, this stuff works really well. This is uh, Lee Valley's branded uh, tongue oil. If you don't know Lee Valley, it's worth checking out, just leevalley.com. And they make lots of great products. This is one of them. Um, I'm sure there's plenty of other products out there, but I like using this one. It's worked really well for the years I've had it. Um, so yeah, uh, bear with me for a few minutes. I'm just going to change the... Uh, camera angle and then we'll get to finishing this here. Okay, so we've got our bowl here. You can see it's got a little bit of a, a kind of a primer coat on here. And what I mean by a primer coat is I take a kind of a really soaked rag of tongue oil and I put it on here and I let it soak in. Now you can see there's a lot of small checks and inclusions and bark inclusions in here. and I really want to fill those with tongue oil as much as possible when I'm finishing this because it helps to uh, preserve it, keep it a little more protected. Like I said, this could become a salad bowl or a fruit bowl in the future. So I want to make sure this isn't something that's going to like rot out or uh, fall out. And I find adding a decent amount of tongue oil, and letting it soak in overnight is a great way to start. So be good to have a nitrile glove. Um, I find it's just kind of makes it a little easier to work with and uh, it's kind of a pain in the butt to wash off your hands. So, Okay, so I've got the tongue oil here. Um, and what I want to do when I'm finishing this is make sure you have like a piece of paper or something like that down below it because it, it is kind of messy. Um, I just take a cloth. You could use a brush if you wanted, but I just use paper towel. And you kind of get it soaked like this. Uh, get a nice amount on there. And then you just start rubbing in a circle. And you want to get the whole thing. You want to evenly coat it as, much, as best as you can. It's not super important to coat it really evenly. You just want to make sure you don't miss any spots. And when it starts to get a little dry, um, you want to make sure you re-soak the rag. Again, get a little more. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but I got a little bit of tear out right in this area here. So I'm going to focus on that area a little bit, try and get it really in there. Um, just so it protects the individual fibers that are sticking up a little bit. It's smooth over top, but there's some almost inclusions with it from the tear out. So we're going to focus on that spot a little more, as well as a little bit on these knots. Just got a little more in there. Okay. Okay, so now that we have the first coat on the inside here, we're just gonna flip it over and we're gonna do the exact same thing. So just get a little bit of oil on your rag here. And focus a little bit on the inclusions, if you have any. If it's just a plain wood bowl um, or even like a figured wood bowl, um, without inclusions, you can go ahead and not have to focus on any area specifically. You can just put a nice even coat on. So, 
starting to wish I got a second glove here. And the way you can tell if you have a nice even coat is just angle it in the light and when you see a dry spot you'll notice some areas like this area with some tear out uh, start to look a little drier and that usually requires just a little more oil to be put on there or it's maybe a spot you missed uh, for instance okay so we've got the bottom there and we're just going to get the rim and then i like to leave it upside down just for a little while while it's starting to dry. Now I like to leave this for about 10 minutes after my coat and this is this is going to be the second coat in this case but regardless I like to leave it for about 10 minutes let the oil soak in and I find this allows it to kind of distribute evenly get soaked in a little better and gives a better coat overall in the end. Now you won't really notice it any differences until you go to buff it and I find that the area the times when you've let it soak in a little more, those areas will tend to actually be a little shinier. So if you can let the whole thing do that, you tend to get a little bit of a better finish, a little bit of a thicker, almost a, a lacquer-like finish. Not quite, but kind of on the thicker side, like a lacquer. So we're gonna let this sit for a few minutes and then we're going to wipe it down. Okay, so we've now let it sit for about 10 minutes or so. Um, it can be between five and 10 minutes. At this point, you just wanna wipe off any excess oil that's on here. So we'll start with the outside. And you'll see after this amount of time, there isn't really a lot of oil coming off of here. It's only the little bit of remnants that are left on the surface where it's either soaked in as much as it can or it just can't quite penetrate as well. So I've given that a good wipe down. Okay. That's about as good as it's gonna get. Okay, everybody, so now that we've added our second coat of tongue oil, it's really just a matter of now waiting 24 hours, maybe a little bit more um, to add another coat if you'd like. I like to do two, maybe three coats. Um, so wait 24 hours, add another coat on top of it, and then wait 24, 48 hours preferably after your final coat, and then you can go and give it a nice buff. And this will really help bring out the grain. It'll get it a really nice shine and that's kind of your finishing touch on this. Now, the reason I'm using tongue oil now over wax finishes is durability. I've been finding, looking back at some of the bowls that I made a number of years ago um, that used exclusively wax finishes, um, they start to break down now and they're not looking as nice as they, they could have. Um, they're also not protecting the wood as well, where a wax coat is just a surface layer or maybe the first little bit of uh, wood. It doesn't penetrate very well, even with mineral oils mixed in. Tongue oil really soaks in. If I was to actually cut this open, you would probably find that after uh, my first good coating that it's actually going to be well within the wood, probably several millimeters down into it. And this really helps to preserve the wood and keep it functioning a lot longer after you produce it. So it's great for kind of high traffic use areas like salad bowls, or you could even use it on cutting boards and stuff like that if you wanted to, although that might be a little bit more work for something that's gonna be beat up pretty hard. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's a really nice durable finish. So make sure when you're buying tongue oil that you get the 100% pure tongue oil. Uh, Lee Valley is a great option for it. There's, I'm sure there's other options out there. I'm not familiar with any other brands. Uh, this is really the one I've used the longest and it seems to work quite well, but stay away from anything with uh, dryer additives or anything like that. And um, just because they're toxic and you don't want them in food with food products and anything like that. So really that's, that's it. So give it a little bit of time, buff it and you're ready to go. Make sure one thing as well uh, with your rags, you wanna either soak these and wash out the oil as best you can and then put it in the garbage or leave them flat out to dry. 
Uh, the biggest, the reason I say that is because oil-soaked rags like this can actually cause fires. If they're bunched up like this, there's uh, a number of uh, times when people have bunched them up, thrown them in the garbage, and they've actually combusted uh, overnight and people have lost their shops and stuff like that. So when you're using this, even though it's uh, not particularly flammable, um, you want to make sure you take your towels, lay them out, uh, let them completely dry, uh, leave them somewhere where if they do uh, catch on fire or anything like that, that they're not going to burn everything around them. So like on a metal bench or something like that, or outside, I find on like a gravel surface, I leave them overnight usually. Or you can wash them out and then throw it away from there. But make sure you do that. It's really important not to leave these bunched up in the garbage can. You don't want anything catching on fire. So that's everything for this video, guys. Um, if you like this video, make sure you leave a like or subscribe. It'd be really appreciated if you could do that. Um, and if you have any other techniques or ideas to improve on this technique of finishing, let me know. I'm really open to hearing what you guys think, uh, what your experiences have been. I'm sure there's plenty of people out there that have um, been doing this a lot longer than I have who have maybe some tips and tricks they can leave down in the comments below. It'd be super appreciated. And um, I'm gonna leave you now with a few uh, kind of glam shots of the bowl once I uh, buff it all up tomorrow. So um, hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks a lot. Bye.